Okay, this is uh, the fourth lecture. And the question that we're looking at is, how will us baptized folk be judged? That is, after our baptism, until we are to stand before judgment seat, how will we be judged? What is the uh, relationship between faith and works? Well, at first I thought, eh, this will be easy. I'll just look up all the scriptures on faith and look up all the scriptures on works and, and select out those that pertain to Judgment Day and, and uh, those that are required and, and include those and try to filter it through somewhat and then go through that list and say, well, let's see, this sounds like faith alone, maybe, uh, but this sounds like Mm, there's probably some works or something, you know, and kind of flag them. Oh, my goodness. This was no... I, I just was, became very quickly discouraged with the very thought of that. Why? Because many of these scriptures have been shot back and forth between sides, as it were, of this controversy through the centuries. A lot, lot of writing on them. A lot of writing. And and it's like um, like wrestling an alligator almost. I mean, <laughs> it just you know it's and 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 the thought comes to my mind over and over. It can't be this hard. Surely God did not mean it to be this hard. And the problem I think in essence is is that we've polarized him, Luther in his mind polarized him to a very unnatural extent that never entered the mind of the ancients of the Jews of that time uh, in he really skewed the issues um, to fit into his paradigm and his paradigm was an alien paradigm to the thinking of those in the first century it, 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 it's just not natural to separate faith and good works. It's just not. It's just um, either in terms of what does God expect of us or how we will be judged or what's the basis of even our assurance of salvation. All these kinds of things um, you, doing just one and the other one being an enemy to it is really foreign. It's really foreign to the spirit of the New Testament writers and to their way of thinking. Um, so, so I thought about going through scriptures, and as you've noticed so far, I haven't really opened, I haven't cracked open the book. I've just kind of laid some, chalked broadly, because what happens is, is that our minds have been trained to think in certain boxes, certain categories of thought, and we have a guttural response, a reactive response quite often, if we don't hear something repeated in the same way we've heard it repeated over and over and over and over and over through the generations. And so we've Frankly, as Protestants, we've done some real violence to Scripture, uh, especially the words of Jesus. Oh, my goodness. If there's anybody who's not faith only, it's Jesus. <laughs> I mean, you look at his writings and about judgment and about his, you know, who, who will inherit eternal life and how do we get eternal life and how are we justified and, oh, my goodness. If there's any an enemy to faith only, you just I could just feel for my brethren wanting to cut it out of scripture, the the uncomfortableness of it. Because they have to work so hard at rationalizing why Jesus said what he said, because it doesn't feel natural to them. It's um it sounds too close to well, what Catholics think, frankly. <laughs> So how do I, I, I was thinking, how do, how do I help people in all this? And one of the things that I thought about that 
seemed helpful to me was to talk about the nature of our salvation history, more specifically, the nature of our, uh, the history of our desalvation, our losing salvation, as it were. In other words, the fall. You remember how we felt in the garden. Basically, we were told a lie about the goodness of God. And based on that, uh, and our own personal willful desires, we chose to distrust God. We, in our imagination, said, God's not looking out for us. He doesn't have our backside. He isn't good. And I'm filling in a lot of words here, but the gist of it is, is that if they really believed that God was a father to them, and that he loved them, and that he was good, they would have never fallen. They would have never disobeyed. But because they were fed doubts, and they entertained those doubts, and believed in those, believed those doubts, it led to them acting out and disobeying. So how does God, he's trying to recapture us. He's trying to restore his relation, original relationship with us in the garden. And he's trying to undo the consequences in our souls of our initial disbelief and our disobedience. Well, the first is he re-images us, re-images to us who God is. Everywhere the gospel's preached, there's this picture put up in front of our eyes. It's a nasty picture. It's a horrifying picture. It's a shocking picture. It's a picture that nobody wants to see. It's a bloody, broken, naked man on a cross. And, I mean, we're so used to it now. But, I mean, if you're hit up with such a thing, you know, the first thing is shock as a human being. He's like, Why are you showing me that? Who is this? What did he do? What is so... What evil would have been so cruel to him? That would have been the natural response. But then the person, as the Gospels unfold, as the story is told to them, they realize, oh my goodness, this is God himself. This is God's son, his beloved son. And then all of a sudden, instead of seeing God as somebody who's out to get us, somebody who really is distant, is harsh, doesn't care, all of a sudden you see a new, you have a new picture that dawns in your heart, a new realization of what perhaps he really is like. And that's the beginning of your salvation, is that revelation, that opening of your eyes as to what God's like. It's your God image is transformed. And then the next step is you say, you know, this is a good God. I, I can trust this God to take care of me and to be my backside, cover my backside. This is this God I can put all my eggs in that basket. I'm willing to have confidence in what he says about my life and what he's told me to do. And then out of that flows a life of obedience as we come to understand who and what he is and, and what he said. Because now, instead of it being, him being a God who's out to get us, now we begin to understand he's a loving father. So this is the way that God attempts to reach us, is by reworking, by undoing the effects of the fall. And you notice that God image comes first, then Faith comes next, and then obedience comes next. They're not separate. You can't spin them off. They 
they flow together. Um, they flow out of each other. They are interdependent. And so I think that's the way to look at it. Um, it's not to polarize and say it's grace versus you earn it. Nobody in their right mind ever thought, I don't think, honestly, who was given any thought to speak of, that we earn anything. I mean, you can't even breathe without God. Right? You can't get out of bed without God, really, ultimately. What do you have that you've not been given? Nothing. It's uh, So to get off into this boogeyman dance with something and you you know you're you construct a demon force that you're shooting against in the dark out here um, that can muddy the water uh, no it, it's grace it's all grace if you're of a sound mind it's all grace the question is is how are they interrelated and what do you do with them and um how do you frame it, especially with respect to judgment? So I, I, I think that there's a way in which it is healthy to not polarize them. I think that's because of Luther's false reading of the Jew-Gentile controversy and trying to layer over his own issues on it. And he, he polarized them. Where in the early, for the early Christians, they went together. So... They didn't have two lists, and they didn't have to reconcile two lists of scripture, the faith scriptures and the deed scriptures, the works. It didn't, it didn't even occur to them. It didn't even occur to them. Now, I want to say one more thing, though, about this. I want to raise this question. Maybe this should be a separate one. I'll make it a separate one. I'll make it the next one. But we'll conclude for now. Thanks.